So welcome to this lecture. I'm Javier de la Torre and I'm going to present new rehabilitation tools, smartphones and smartwatches. But first of all, why smartphones and smartwatches? Well, as we might know, around 70% of stroke patients present hemiparesis, which is defined as weakness in one entire side of the body due to contralateral pain damage. So as we might be familiar with, this reduced functionality in the affected limb leads to an increased cost and reduced probability of success when accomplishing certain tasks, which in some patients is translated to stop using this affected limb, uh, which in turn uh, leads to a decreased neural representation. This overall uh, is considered as a vicious cycle, which receives the name of learn non-use that we have learned in other lectures. However, we have evidence from some neurocomputational models that the use of the affected arm is related to a functional recovery and motor recovery. So we should promote this use of the affected arm. In fact, uh, some recent, or not that recent models, but that are well stated in the field, show that if we are able to bring this arm use above a certain threshold, the spontaneous use of the arm leads to a virtuous cycle reversing the known vicious cycle of learned non-use, which promotes spontaneous recovery. So we now know that it is important to use the, the affected limb and that this promotes true recovery. And in fact, uh, some conventional therapies aim to the same, for instance, to the sense, for instance, constraint-induced movement therapy in which they impair the use of the healthy arm, forcing patients to use the affected arm. However, these therapies, um, only a few patients are eligible. They are sometimes frustrating because they are not realistic environment in which patients can do by manual actions and they require supervision. And moreover, they are assuming that the generalization of skills learned we will translate to the actual life of uh, activities of daily living of the patient. So this calls for the need of new interventions that can provide robust monitoring of recovery and arm use during activities of daily living. And what is more important, that can promote the use of the affected arm at the home of the patient, which is the environment, the most realistic environment in which we want rehabilitation or functional improvement to take place. So um, here I present uh, some approaches using these wearable technologies, which are an interesting target uh, for study, given the necessities that, that we have in, in this field. For instance, a study uh, some years ago now showed that uh, by the use of conductive elastomers, we were able to detect posture and gestures However, these setups are hard to be uh, implemented at, at, the, at the home of the patient and, and uh, cannot be used in activities of daily living. Um, but more recent approaches are showing promising results. For instance, a recent study showed that just by providing feedback on a user's performance or user's, uh, user's uh, arm use, um, we were able to kind of reverse this learned non-use cycle by promoting the use of the affected arm. Uh, more recent approaches are using uh, electromyographic recordings and artificial intelligence to detect uh, or to do gesture recognition with impressive um, uh, percentages of accuracy. So, okay, there's a growing interest in, in these technologies. However, some of these approaches require the use of two bracelets or impossible setups to be translated at, at the home of the patient. And it is only until recently that uh, developments in, in wearables and smartwatches and phones uh, have allowed for the technical capabilities to, to actually implement some of the strategies that we, that we would be aiming for. As Henry Ford said, uh, real progress happens only when advantages of a new technology become available to everybody. And uh, if this is the case, we are seeing a, an enormous increase in the interest of M Health market, which stopped to around $8 billion by 2018. 
So now we have some reviews on the application of, the, of these M Health apps to actually uh, enact behavioral changes in the users. For instance, a study uh, of, of these applications for respiratory or, uh, or diabetes conditions showed a positive impact in clinical health outcomes, a high degree of user satisfaction, and a high degree on retention rates, which is important if we pretend that, that, uh, that these improvements are retained in the long term. Uh, we also have reviews on the application of these technologies and for rehabilitation purposes, and they showed that for monitoring, uh, these devices present good psychometric properties to initial activity, and as an intervention tool, they present positive effects on some medical and clinical outcomes, such as the fugal major scale. However, they agree that more research is needed to actually present them as a strong rehabilitation uh, tool. Uh, more recent uh, uh, studies show that uh, in, in uh, 41 stroke patients, for instance, that they were presenting uh, chronic conditions, uh, the, uh, this study showed that, well, presented a battery of exercise to be performed at home, and it showed that uh, this kind of technologies promote adherence to home exercise programs and uh, better acquisition as compared to conventional therapies. So uh, to this end, we are developing the RGS uh, application for wearables in which um, this application would only require the use of a smartwatch and a smartphone that are connected and sending this data to an online, online database. So here I'm presenting how we can use this technology both for intervention and for monitoring. For instance, for treatment, we, we have shown that we can detect different activities of daily living depending on their level of motor demand. We moreover are implementing a module based on uh, habit formation principles. So the, the alarms that this system provides, such as the frequency of the alarm or the saliency or um, linking uh, some of these behaviors to contextual cues, how these technologies can promote the adherence to positive behavior and patient empowerment. And moreover, uh, what, what this technology allows for is to set personalized feedback, feedback depending on patient's capabilities. So we can set personal goals of arm use depending on the state of the user, uh, providing an optimal level of challenge depending on the condition of each specific patient. Uh, in doing so, we can see using synthetic data how this system can adapt to the performance of the user and provide more difficult or easier uh, goals depending on how uh, this patient has performed during, for instance, uh, the last week. Moreover, uh, we can also use these tools for monitoring. For instance, a study in 2010 showed that an activity that consisted on circle drawing uh, presented a very high degree of correlation with fugal major clinical scales. So to provide this robust assessment, we can implement this kind of activities into these uh, devices, these smartwatches, and by studying different parameters, such as the range of motion of the patient, the movement, roundness and velocity or intertrial variability provide a robust assessment that, uh, that gives us more longitudinal information and that can complement uh, the, the clinical data. Moreover, this data can be used to improve uh, the models that try to, to model the dynamics of motor recovery. For instance, uh, these models in which um, Krakauer presented the proportional recovery rule uh, and distinguishing which patients can be considered as recoverers against non-recoverers or how um, the use of the paretic limb can extend rehabilitation beyond periods that previously were assumed to, to be no longer beneficial. So for instance, extending recovery beyond one year after the, the occurrence of the, of the stroke. Um, this is data that uh, is novel and has not been able to, to use before 
and that can provide some insights on how treatments should be done for each specific patient. What is important here is that these technologies allow for the, for the assessment of uh, the behavior of the patients, not only in the motor domain, but can also be applied to other conditions such as aphasia, and this is a work that we are doing uh, right now, to study these mechanisms of learned non-use uh, applied to, for instance, language deficits. So thank you for your attention, and uh, that's all for this lecture.